Well, you know, I think everybody likes to think of themselves as intelligent people. So I think, you know, the number one thing that teenage kids have to do is to actually pay a little bit of attention to, to this, this issue, just in the same way they would pay attention to the other most important things. Uh, it's hard not to uh, believe you're invulnerable, but I think it's helpful for teenagers to talk to somebody who's gone through the same situation right at the beginning and somebody that they trust. It could be an uncle who's had uh, a bad ha thing happen and who might have a lesson that they'd like to listen to. You know, most teenage kids are not interested in listening to a doctor talk to them, you know, pedantically about, you know, the disadvantages any more than adults like to sit and listen to PowerPoint presentations. They, they want to see the real McCoy. So to me, you know, if if young people can get themselves in front of or have an audience with somebody who's actually gone down this road, either another peer or something like that, that's very kind of a, that's a powerful thing in terms of trying to get them to, to uh, begin to understand, you know, why somebody else changed that behavior. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, uh, you know, there are all kinds of websites. I mean, just you can all you got to do is just go to Google and just type in, you know, cigarette cigarette smoking, and, and young people can find all the messages. They can find all the facts and all the data. Uh, my my biggest worry is again is that those facts and data they're just too abundant to actually be able to consume. What you really have to do is sort of translate it to yourself. You know, if you like to be athletic, cigarette smoking is going to harm that. You're not going to be able to run. You, if you like playing soccer, you're going to be worse at it. If you don't like having the flu in the winter time, if you smoke, you're going to cough for another week longer. If uh, you, you know, want to uh, consider yourself a healthy person uh, and have good skin and be pretty, you know, a woman or man, uh, you can count on the fact that you're going to be a wrinkled up ugly bag by the time you're 38 or 40 if you're a cigarette smoker because of the unbelievable damaging effects that cigarettes have on skin and everything internal that you can't see. I mean, it's unbelievable when we uh, find 30, 33 year old uh, men, especially, walking in with heart attacks. Uh, you know, these aren't cocaine using people. These are people whose risk factor was cigarette smoking and who might or might not have elevated cholesterol levels. But cigarette smoking is so damaging to your inside of your body that uh, young people really have to take that into account. And you know, when you see the Marlboro man with erectile dysfunction, you know, that's the real McCoy and people need to understand that's, that's real. You know, and why is that? And the, the reality is that cigarette smoke is very damaging to your blood vessels. And so people need to understand, you know, like, what causes an erection? Healthy blood vessels are, are what make it happen. You don't want to be on Viagra. You don't want to take Cialis. You don't want any of those Levitra products. And you're going to take those by the time you're 50 years old if you smoke cigarettes. I guarantee you, if you're, especially if you're fat and you don't take care of yourself, which many smokers don't, you'll find yourself wishing, like all the wrinkled up people who wish they hadn't spent time in the sun or who smoked, by the time they're 50, they don't look too good and they wish they would have backed up. And I think that, you know, here's an opportunity for young people to be able to, to look at that right in the eye. Cigarette smoke clearly gets inside your blood vessels. And I'm talking about whether you smoke or if you get secondhand smoke. The, the chemicals get into your bloodstream and they activate infl inflammation inside the blood vessels and they knock down the ability of your blood vessels to be able to regulate themselves properly. They interfere with things and oxidize things. They literally, it's like taking peroxide and pouring it on stuff. Everybody knows that that shouldn't, that, that, that wouldn't be healthy, but it interferes, it gets into the blood vessel walls and it damages them and they don't react properly. And they start to get stiffer over time and then they don't do the things they're supposed to do. You get a stroke. You walk around dragging your arm and your leg for the rest of your life because you're a cigarette smoker. You know, you suddenly lose a limb because uh, you know the blood supply to your leg is is gone because of cigarette smoking, which is you know something we see all the time. People who've got horrible vascular disease, or as everybody else knows, you know you have a heart attack, and heart attacks are the consequence of blood vessels in the in the heart that are just progressively narrowed down and full of junk and can't react properly, and uh, you know you you shave 10, 15 years off your life. So how do you convince a teenager about that? I don't know. To me, you know, of all the things I probably wouldn't have wanted to have when I was 18 was impotency. So maybe you target that. I don't know. But they're all the same. They all, all the blood vessels in the body are being just as adversely affected as, as the genital organs are. And guess what? The same thing is true for females. 
So there are consequences that are just so prevalent through the whole body. I don't know, when you're smoking in the back, you know, or in the bathroom with your friends, are you going to think about that? Probably not. But at some point, you know, when you get sick, the next time you get sick and you're sick and tired of it all, uh, you know, people should go online. There are all kinds of telephone resources. Uh, you know, San, uh, uh, California has a, uh, you know, non-smoking uh, cessation program. There are counselors. There are even, you know, beautiful programs uh, that exist in co companies these days. Self-help things. So you don't have to reveal yourself. You know, you don't have to go to AA in order to stop cigarette smoking. There are medicines that are now available. Uh, you want to do that in conjunction with a physician. But um, <clears throat> of all the damn things in the 21st century that bother me the most, it's the fact that when I work in the emergency room is that most of what I see in that ER is preventable. Preventable, you know? Uh, probably most of the shootings are preventable. Probably most of the heart attacks, the strokes, and a great deal of diabetes is preventable. It's unbelievable that people don't take care of themselves. Um, maybe people don't have the same view of, of, of their bodies that I do as a physician, but to me, we were born kind of, you know, we, we evolved into these bodies uh, and we're lucky to have them. And the environment that we lived in or our ancestors lived in 100,000 years ago are for the most part the genes that we own today. And I guarantee you they weren't smoking cigarettes. So those kinds of things, sedentary lifestyles, instead of running and hunting and gathering, breathing pollution, specifically cigarette pollution, you know, eating garbage instead of eating the kinds of things that we're growing. Those things all are maladaptive to the human, to the homo sapien. And uh, people shouldn't be surprised if they suddenly go blind or can't see because they just completely ignored the science and the reality of it all. So, you know, uh, th that'd be my message is, uh, you know, is wake up. Uh, you know, bad things are gonna happen to you uh, it's not a threat, it's more like an opportunity for you to go learn about stuff and be, be, take charge of your own uh, destiny. Yeah.